Good morning and welcome to Thought for the Day. This week we're going to be looking at a little letter tucked away in the New Testament just before Hebrews. First I'm going to set out the outline of the story and the characters. The letter is written by the Apostle Paul together with Timothy. It was written probably at the same time as Paul's letter to the Colossians and delivered on the same journey. Philemon, the recipient of the letter, lived in Colossae. He was a Christian who had been converted through Paul's ministry. He was also, in common with many at the time, a slave owner. More about that later in the week. Our other main character is Onesimus. Onesimus had been Philemon's slave. However, he had run away, probably stealing from Philemon, a crime punishable de by death under Roman law. He had then met Paul and through his ministry had also become a Christian. Both Paul and Onesimus have recognised that the right thing for Onesimus to do is to go back to Philemon, a brave step. Paul writes this letter to plead Onesimus's cause. What he asks of Philemon is no small thing given the cultural pressures and expectations that Philemon would have been under. What has this story got to do with us today? The letter is included in scripture because its message is timeless and has relevance for Christians down the ages, including us today. It speaks of God's role in our lives and the changes he works in us and how we should respond to people who we've wronged or who have wronged us. So let's turn to the opening section of the letter. Philemon, verse 1. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy our brother, to Philemon our dear friend and fellow worker, also to Aphia our sister, and Archippus our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul sets out his identity at the beginning of the letter as usual, but this time he describes himself simply as a prisoner of Jesus. He doesn't draw on his authority as an apostle, though he refers to it later, but his identity as a follower of Jesus, immediately identifying himself as a brother in Christ to Philemon. He also notes his status as a prisoner. He's someone who has been willing to make sacrifices for Jesus, so it's reasonable for him to ask others to do the same. He's not standing high and mighty over Philemon, but drawing alongside. Then he describes Philemon as a dear friend and fellow worker. And note that the letter, and therefore the request, also go to two others associated with Philemon and to the church that meets in his house. This is not a letter that can be considered and dealt with or dismissed in private. Others are involved. Paul then gives a greeting very much in character for his letters, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We could skip over that and think nothing much of it, but in view of what follows, it's very important. Paul is about to ask something very difficult of Philemon, something which will require him to stand firm for his faith in the sight of others and against the ways and standards of the society in which he lives. When he first saw Onesimus returning, Philemon's natural reaction might be anger. He will be called to show grace in responding to him, the same grace that God has already extended to them both. He may also feel turmoil. It was potentially a stressful situation. He will need God's grace and his peace. That same grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ are available to us. When you face situations that are stressful, that cause anxiety or leave you in turmoil, reach out to the Lord and his peace, which passes all understanding, will calm your soul. When you're confronted with a situation in which someone has hurt or wronged you or others in some way, and your natural response would be to anger or confrontation or retaliation, 
then seek God's grace. The same grace he has shown you in welcoming you to him, forgiving your wrongs and promising you eternal life. Now, I don't know what situations you may be facing today or this week, but do reach out to the Lord for his help. Whatever you're dealing with, start with him. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your grace and forgiveness towards us. We thank you for the peace that you breathe into our hearts through your Holy Spirit. We pray that we might know your grace and peace through situations we face today and this week and any day. In Jesus' name, Amen.